Hello and welcome to another video on PyQt and Qt Designer. Uh, today we're going to talk about the new plugin that just uh, came out on the MatQt pip package. If you just landed on this video and you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll leave in a link in the description below for this website here. Basically, MatQt is a pip package that extends PySite 6. So here in the, in the documentation, you can see we have a new uh, widget uh, expander and it's a Qt Designer plugin. I added a page here in the documentation showing you how you can add widgets and plugins uh, to the MadQt pip package. So if you like to contribute in that way, you're more than welcome to. And we got some widgets here. We got a, a simple button that, that was mainly done as part of this tutorial here. Uh, we also have a new input widget called Anim Picker and this will let you uh, pick an, uh, an animation curve and duration uh, for your animations. The new container expander uses this inside the Qt Designer. We're going to look at that right now. These widgets came out in alpha version number 30, so you might want to update your MadQt installation. To keep track of new updates, you can visit our GitHub page and press here on releases. And this will tell you what came out and when. So I'm going to create a just a widget and I'm going to add this new expander plug into it. And as you can see, we got animations right off the box inside of Qt Designer. Now, because this is a container, you can basically animate anything that you place inside of this container, as long as you give it obviously uh, a layout. Let me just, this is coming off screen here. So let's give it a layout. And now anything, anything in there will have that animation. If we look at the controls in the expander, these first five controls are all based on the curve and the speed, the duration of uh, our animation in milliseconds. So if I do a 2000, you can see it's really slow now. But you don't have to really uh, edit them here because we have this edit animation menu and this will pop up our other widget that I just mentioned, which is the animation picker. And here we can select the type of animation we like, change the duration, and some of these curves have overshoot amplitude period, so you can change that there as well. So you can have a lot a lot to pick off pick from. So I'll say okay, I like that one. Actually it's too slow, I'll go back to 250. Okay. And if I do a control R you can see we have animation in that container. Now at the moment uh, animate on Uber is selected so I can turn these off and trigger the animation with the expanded property. You can also trigger these expanded property using uh, signals and slots. So let's say I have a, a checkbox here and uh, I go into my signal and slot editor and I choose a signal that, uh, that sends out a boolean for example, toggled. Then you can see that we have set expanded here. So if I connect that, and now I come here and I press it, you can see that we can trigger it in that way. At the moment, it starts off with um, animate width only, but you can also animate the height. And then you got these two parameters here, which is animate from width and height two with the night and you can see that we start at the width of 100 pixels and then we animate 250 pixels we can change this as we like and uh, I'm gonna go back to animate on Hoover so I can see my animation in action here and it, as you can see now it goes to 200 pixels I can also choose here animate height and say that I want the animate the height to go to 150 and then and now we have this to really take advantage of this plugin, you should have a good understanding of layouts and how they work. For example, if I remove all my margins here and I choose both my buttons and I say that, you know, my buttons have now a minimum vertical policy, I get this result. So let's look at, for example, now I don't want my height to change anymore. So I can come down here and remove my height. And the reason I'm doing this, you'll see in, this, in a second. I'm just going to try and do a small example here inside of a layout. Just going to turn off Animate on Uber for a second. And I'm going to create a layout here. Uh, just for simplicity and speed. I'll just place two push buttons there. 
I'll select one of these. I'll select my layout and select these ones. I'm going to do a, an horizontal layout like that. And then the whole widget, I'll make um, a vertical layout like that. You can see that um, even though my vertical policy says preferred, my expander doesn't um, expand on the vertical. This is because uh, at the moment uh, we're using minimum size and maximum size to animate. So because uh, I turned on animate height before, it changed the, the, the maximum size of the height. So if I say, you know what, I'll put the big number here. Now we, we have that behavior. So the animate from, for example, if I say that animate from is zero, to see my animation, I'll bring back animate on over. Okay, now it disappears. If I turn it on, it shows up like that. Because we're going from zero to, to, to 200. And if I do a control R here, now my checkbox makes something appear out of nothing. So you can see the potential of this plugin and the crazy things that you can do with it, uh, messing around with layouts and using this. If you just landed on this video and you're a bit confused, this is Qt Designer from PySite 6. We're not using Qt Creator here. And this is a plugin that comes with a Mad Qt pip package. There's a link in the description below and uh, the documentation shows you how to install and access Qt Designer plugins from it. Okay guys, I know I've been talking about Qt Painter paths and all that and uh it's been like a third video that i promised that i'm going to talk about it but don't worry i'll get to it i'm, I'm getting things ready i want to do a good tutorial about um some more um, q painter stuff so i'll see you in the next video have fun with this and you can see where we're going from the from here making cute designer a lot more powerful see you in the next video